<laughs> no, I, no, I know. You know, the point is the food security, how much we'll end up spending on the food security bill as Donald Rumsfeld might put it as a known unknown. I mean, it's a sort of, I think the number you're referring to is for this year only. The question is, over a period of time, you've created an entitlement whose costs are actually unknown. And there are economists within the finance ministry who are disputing the figures the government uh, government to put out. I mean, the CACP uh, estimate, which Ornop put, is at an upper band, but there are various. The issue is that you could, there are alternative uses for the money. You could invest, as Ornop is saying, you know, in, in creating storage facilities. You could invest in research. I mean, that the government invest in GM uh, seeds. I mean, if it doesn't trust private sector companies, I mean, China has has an enormous GM. So I think that is the, I mean, but that's to a. Do that, you have to put politics on the back, on the yeah. back footing. So I think that's, that, that's the issue. Which? The point is that if this is a resource constrained economy, you have, there are alternative uses for that for that rupee and what is what gives you most bang for the buck I think, which is I think I think I think I think we are going to an area right now where we also I'm coming to you Abhik you see uh, you've not spoken since your introductory comments coming straight to you you know, what about the people you you claim to be doing all this for the people why are political parties not honest and saying that we are doing it for vote banks there would at least be an implicit honesty when you make that comment because when the people here are suffering high inflation, when you increase the minimum support prices for your subsidized rice and uh, wheat, you're going to lead to an inflationary condition out of it. So this food security bill will have a further inflationary impact. Who thinks about the people at this time and comes back to the core issue that Swapandas Gupta raised? Are we oblivious to 80 rupees a kilo of onions? Or is there a feeling let the middle class of this country live with it? The I want somebody to address that from this side. Avik, will you do that, please? I would. I would. Uh respond to Mr. Swapandas Gupta and I would also pose a few questions seeing that we've been questioned so far. Yeah. Oil and onions was a very pretty statement to make in the relationship. If you don't have the money, if oil inflation prices are going up, how do you get the oil and how do you cook the onions, sir? <laughs> Anyway, uh, well, one think, is you know. Uh, let me let me let me finish. Let one me finish, is sir. fossil fuel, and another is ground. Yeah, let me, let so me that's finish. the answer. If you know your if you let know your finish. oil, you would know it. Let me finish. Since you don't know either oil or onions, you're asking. The question I want to ask you is of a few facts that were brought up by various members in the house. Firstly, corruption. I know for a fact, and this I've read up, that corruption at various levels adds on twenty percent to the MRP of any product. In the end, fine. Who is asking you to pay the bribe? Who is asking you to pay the bribe? Has anybody put a gun to your head and told you to pay the bribe? We are looking for easy getaways. We are looking for easy getaways and then we blame the government for saying that we take bribes. Do not encourage it in the first place. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 it's and a just, wonderful question. And, and I think it deserves, let me finish. it deserves a very straight waiting, waiting, answer. Let me finish. It let deserves an honest answer. Uh, can I, think, I let us look at okay, the watch, watch. Let us look are at you the yielding? Commonwealth Games. You yield for a minute, let him reply. 75,000 crores. We were not obliged to pay the bribes. Did they ask you to pay the bribes? 75,000 crores. Who paid the bribes? Who received the bribes? Let's have a get. Yeah. Let's the, get the, honest about it. Let, Let's get the, real. The honesty, it's is not the, the railway clerk who takes 20 rupees, who is, who is responsible for bringing up the marked retail price of a product by 20%. It is corruption which is operating on a very, very different sphere and which operates not very distant from this socialist gothic monstrosity yeah, I which would, we are I would like to respond. Okay, okay, okay. Let, let, let respond. The response, sir, is if you are if you're globalizing the thing of corruption so much, if you bring it down no, to a very local level, let me bring it down. Let me localize it. Let me kilometers of this place. I'm localizing it. Mr. Das Gupta, sir, sir, sir. If, there, if are very, corruption... there are very few people, okay. the, the people who pay corruption, who, the people who use corruption is because they're too lazy to go and take action. No, that... No. And, and then we blame the government for it. Are we too, are we too lazy if we're caught by a police cop for not possessing a license? Are we too lazy to get our license confiscated, appear in court and then get... Find okay. for it. Okay. We that, don't. We are escaping I'm, I'm, that. I'm touched and that then we have a very idealistic view yeah. of the level of corruption, corruption in this country. I'm so glad that so you glad. think that corruption exists only at that level. You don't think corruption exists to no. get a file moving. You don't think that corruption exists to get clearances. You don't think corruption exists to tamper with land records and suppress it under RTI. But this applies to these all parties. These are things, these are applies, applies to all parties. Mr. This, Mr. Is this is a political corruption. Pawan has been trying to say this is a Congress BJP debate, which it's not. But I think there is a place for the Me Too parties also. I think there's a very, very important place for them, which is why he enlarged the scope of governance. 
And I think the, the, he basically ended up supporting. The question is, the question is once, I have one point to make. Is it once, first of all, please direct it through the chair, the esteemed chair. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, other point is how honest are we on corruption? I'm glad we're talking about corruption because when you ask the, you know, the government, a planning commission, why is coal production low? They say, well, you know, forest clearances, environment clearances, land acquisition. They don't say that 80% of the coal blocks haven't started production because you gave it to a lot of people. I'm sorry to say a lot of those people were unethical elements who got it through rackets. That's corruption. The identifying of the problem is critical. If the Planning Commission of India does not identify the real problem why coal production does not happen, which is corruption, and says it's only clearances, which is also a government problem, then are we addressing the core issue? But the gentleman there wanted to contradict. Pawan Varma wanted an interjection. Go ahead. I, the I floor is yours. Sanjay Jha, on this side. Allies, please. So, Always. Yes. <laughs> potential, potential allies. Potential please. allies. Potential allies. So, if we think that corruption is not opportunistic and is endemic, then the only person who can change it is who is outside the system. If I am giving the bribe, I have, and if I don't want to give the, give the bribe, I have to stand up and say that I'm not going to give the bribe. Because the person sitting above the person who's taking the bribe is also okay. taking a bribe. So the whole solution aspect starts off from me and not really from the government. And we as a nation should understand that and not really blame Saran the government. Rakhar, the simple way you can solve this problem, especially on the approval stages, is let a private business come, get its license, and then make the entire process transparent. There is an interest of the political class to retain the inefficiency in their system. Because yeah, yeah. by having discretionary powers, oh, they can engage in political favoritism. He's agreeing with me. Exactly. No, he's no, speaking I'm against talking it. about this problem, which is the yes, core exactly. issue. You are agreeing with the class. No, he's agreeing with You are agreeing The whole. He's agreeing with us. So the problem is that you're agreeing with our side. That's why I said, Pavan, you should be on our side. We don't know where they are. No, we know. Just to respond to Swapan, and you'll allow me. You that. should be careful. Should, they should be on the other side. I have a question, Sanjay. Uh, you will allow me a response yes, to I'll that. Yes, I'll allow a response. I think the problem is not that we don't know where we stand. I think the political parties who think they are the only ones who matter believe that they can make us stand wherever they want us to, and we don't. That is another matter. But the second point is, the second point is, Arnab, corruption is condemnable. There can be no justification or condemnation of it. But I want to ask you a question. Yes. An ordinance was bought in recently. Yeah. Whatever the other motivations, there was also this notion in the minds of parliamentarians that when majorities are wafer thin, if three MPs become disqualified, <laughs> governments can fall. I go back repeatedly to an issue that to take a hard stand on corruption, you also need the kind of enabling milieu which today's polity lacks. People are afraid elections instead of five years later will take place in a year and a half. They are collecting money for the elections. This is the real problem. So they? we can keep debating the symptoms. We they? can keep debating the system. They? I want to make one other point Who just to they? open up the debate. Who is collecting money for the elections? I think, I think political system. parties are. And I believe that there is no degree of hypocrisy on this issue. Today political parties, they are... Their accounts are not on website. They are not audited properly. They are merely a statement given to the income tax. They say 740 crores, of which only 2% are from identified donors. Because there is a law which election commission has recommended a dozen times should be repealed, which is that you cannot make donations to parties without identifying the donor. Currently, the law so says if it's less than 20,000, no, you can. Bo Bo Therefore, Bo I, say, Bo I say to this. Bo 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 has a question. Bo 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 has a question. What prevents you from repeating the law? What prevents parliament so from... I'll, the I'm so glad you asked the question. What prevents it, it? Because the entire political class, as a result of the dynamic of its functioning, is complicit in the perpetuation of these bad laws. The election commission sends 22 proposals to the standing committee, Three come back approved, which include the decibel level of speakers during election rallies. And all the major points are ignored and sent back. What are we going to do? Will we continue to discuss the symptoms here or should we go to root causes? Watch, watch, watch. Kavya, the problem I find is roundabout. You acknowledge the problem, you say it exists. Then you find everyone else to blame but the political class itself. You blame everyone. But directly. Uh, well, and I'm saying, therefore, it's a generic problem. Kavya is countering you, Kavya. So, so, uh, 
uh, I feel like we've really moved the focus of this debate to electoral reforms and the money spent there. I just want to come back to just how one, else do just, just, one just one second, please. Well, okay, well, just well, a sir. point. Uh, so they talked about how the CCI has cleared like 1.3 lakh million. crores of projects, and you know, suddenly they've cleared all the projects and red tapeism is not there. But I'd like to say something. These are projects that have been stalled for four or five years. So yeah. now the banks don't have the finances lined up to start work on these projects immediately because the interest rates have gone up. Ba the banks are not able to lend money. Sorry, uh, the companies. So the banks are able to lend money to the companies to start these projects. Don't you think the government is acting too little too late? Like Sir said, isn't it too little too late? And I feel like also one more thing I'd like to talk about is the, the National Food Security Act. You want, you want to bring about a targeted public distribution system. So in states like Tamil Nadu and other states where the PDS actually works, there's no clear cut there's no clear-cut time frame or, measure or, or how exactly the implementation is going to take place. Is it going to be allied? Is it going to be in line with the public distribution system? None of this has been really discussed or debated about. So what would the opposition like to say about yeah, this? Yeah, absolutely. I think Sanjay Jha should answer. Uh, Sanjay Jha, can I just add one more thing yeah, to that? You yeah, know, why, yeah. you know, finance minister, ex-finance minister fighting in the open, is that good? Finance minister indirectly blaming the uh, the president for what happened is that well, you know, the lack of collective decision making is something we are repeatedly asking you here today. Passing the buck has become far too common and taking responsibility far too rare. Would you like to respond to that? Well, as well, as well, well let me tell you that. I, uh, let me reassure you that we got a fantastic and everybody calls it in the financial world as a dream team. Uh, looking at India's uh, macroeconomic realities, which is a uh, prime minister who is a renowned economist. You have uh, Mr. Montek Singh Alibalia, Mr. Chidambaram. You've got a great RBI growth. governor who all of you love for his good are you, looks. Are you indirectly no. saying that the previous team and the previous it's finance minister, the president well, Rajdhani, well, well, let me tell you, these, the are, these are all economists. Are you suggesting the, that Pranav Let, let me ask you a question. On infrastructure, let me tell you, this is a reality, and this is not just in India. We need to overcome that, of course, is there is a degree of red tape. There's no denying that. It has been experienced even in public-private partnerships. We need to cut through red tape. That is a reality. And I believe if you reduce red yeah, tape yeah. in bureaucracy, that will reduce corruption itself significantly. But you have to give space for environmental clearances. Remember when Uttarakhand happened? Everybody knows it was an account of environmental clearances that were given in a casual fashion. So this is the responsibility of the government. So let me tell you the, let me tell you the corporate you sector. Counter for him, I'm the allowing the counter. Sector. Saranch is countering, you allow him. Why can't the government do the clearing process and then have the tendering process instead of the private company to go ahead and do all of those things? It delays the costs further and further. Why can't the government do that? A specific question. If you The Prime Minister pointed out that we must not allow environment controls to become a part of the new license control permit, Raj. Well, let me tell you, actually, in the new clearances that are being given, it is given in a single window. And thereafter, you know, the entire, uh, you know, what is called as a post facto, the clearances are obtained in a, in a, in a fast so speed fashion. But, but let me tell you, so if, you, if, you look at, so you if you look at the land acquisition policy, so please read the land acquisition policy. It will address the whole issue, not just of acquisition of land, but resettlement, rehabilitation. I keep reminding you, and let me tell you, I'm sitting here with a jacket and tie does not make me uh, less of somebody who is suffering somewhere in the back or beyond why that you and I cannot see. That? I think we all need to understand I mean, this why is a larger story. Your the India and story, <laughs> India story uh, Swapan is a lot bigger and much more to borrow your word, complex. Oh, well, and I'm okay, going to okay, pose okay. you a question. I want to have a question yeah. for Swapan because yeah. he's been sitting merrily and you know laughing away to glory. So why don't you answer this question for me? The government passed, or rather the parliament passed the FDI in multi-brand retail. It could have been done through an executive order, but yet we did it through parliament. Yes. How do you explain to me that the India's leading opposition party, for whom you seem to have some subterfuge sympathy, apparently says, that in the event, I don't think that will ever happen, thank God, but in the event that we ever win power, we will cancel the FDI and multi-brand retail. As a foreign investor, yeah, 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 yeah. how would you respond? Take, take the, what, yeah, yeah. Maybe is that, the, is that the reason why you think there's been zero investment in foreign well, in retail? Well, let me tell is you. Is that the reason? Is no, that no, one statement that's given an by no, no, watch one, watch one MP second. from Jharkhand no. is responsible for cancelling so, so, the so, so, The point is very no, no, simple. No, no, no. Has, has India ever 
reversed any sovereign guarantee. No, no, no. Watch. And I think that's one thing no, no, we no, should so, all so be clear about. The moot question put back in your court. In fact, this entire treasury benches must answer the question. When you say we will revoke a policy of this, who government, said we will revoke? Well, who Mur said? Murli Manohar Joshi said. One individual person. No, no, no. One member of parliament from Jharkhand said. Murli Manohar Joshi said. Rajnath Singh. Oh, one member from Rajnath Singh. The point is, they will not. There has been no guarantee whatsoever. But no point. Swapanda, it would be complete. Swapanda as Gupta. the prime prime ministerial Swap, designate Swapanda of the BJP Gupta, said it. Swapanda he has not said If you allow me, the point please. is very Anna, simple. If you allow me, that because, because, day, because one sec, Swapanda there are Gupta. various voices which come in. Swapanda and Gupta. at the same time, I think some voices can yes, have sir. the right to override Swap, your voice Swap, too. Swapanda. Or no. <laughs> I like that. Wait, Swapan Das Gupta, you are not just wiser but louder. Uh, but you know, I may like to humbly remind you that it was Rajnath Singh who said that yeah. we will not revoke yeah. the retail FDI policy. The question being put is, it your, would be very a silly. member of your it bench, would be a member of your bench, a, a member of your bench says, send the right message to foreign investors. What message are we sending to foreign investors? Are, are you pro-investment, pro-populism or just anti-Congress? That's so the question which is being put here. Yeah, but I'm saying, uh, Arnab, that is a serious governance uh, is, m m issue. So we cannot allow that to happen. This exactly. also cannot be allowed to happen. So I'm saying, so okay. when you talk about governance question. issues and economic I decline, I, I, what I don't investors don't are looking for is inconsistency in policy. No, I agree with you, but what I'm saying is, why doesn't the BJP say that up front? They know also internally. Ask the BJP. So we have, I take my membership no, no, of the BJP, I will ask. Since I have not taken oh, a membership of the BJP, I cannot answer it. The